Welcome out to Tackle Trading's YouTube channel. This is Coach Matt. We're going to have some fun tonight as we dial in a little bit of analysis on bullish retracements. And specifically, we're going to get into the flag base patterns, those shallow retracements that happen in the market, what we're seeing in uh, quite a bit in the market right now, the S&P, communications, discretionary technology, flag base patterns are kind of the pattern we're tracking this week in the market. So I felt like what better time to uh, talk about bull flags and retracement analysis when the mar broad market itself is doing it. So we're going to have some fun here tonight. And as always, as we go through Tackle Trading 101 series here, basic introductory uh, type education when it comes to learning how to navigate the financial worlds. And if you do love Tackle Trading and you want to become a part of this amazing trading community where we put education in absolutely everything, even when we're talking about application, you can always sign up for a Tackle Trading Pro membership and become a part of our great community where you get weekly reports, monthly mastermind groups, exclusive Discord access, daily webinars, help across the board, scout reports every single weekend, you name it. You, uh, we have it at Tackle Trading. You can always go to bit.ly slash join Tackle Trading Pro or excuse me, join Tackle Pro. And if you want to sit down with uh, Coach Sylvia and uh, dial in a specific uh, plan for yourself from an education perspective or just need help or, or, or to get advice, whatever the case might be, you can always set up a 30-minute consultation at tackletrain.com slash schedule hyphen consultation and with that said this coach matt guys and we're going to have some fun here tonight we're going to be focused focusing specifically on the flag based pattern but in general retracement analysis pullback analysis and what we're going to be focusing on here tonight is we're going to learn how to score a pattern when when it comes to identifying the quality setups of a flag what differentiates one pattern from the other why do traders gravitate towards a certain pattern and discount other patterns why is it as we're going through our scanning can we visually identify a thousand different stocks and correctly identify the ones that look the best well it's because we like to score patterns we like to score from a, a, a variety of different perspectives when it comes to the type of analysis that you need to go through and the step-by-step -step approach you need to go through when you're going from finding a trade, prepping a trade, placing the uh, placing the trade. And so we're going to focus on that here tonight as we go through the scoring of bullish pullback analysis. We're going to talk about the primary qualifications, also the secondary qualifications, and then we're going to go through a case study specifically on the bull flag itself but in general talk and retracements here tonight now i'm going to take my video down as we focus on the educational aspect i'll bring it back up when we get uh when we get a little bit more into the prep work so uh that's why i'm uh, because if i don't take my video down sometimes i don't focus on the conversation a little bit here and if you have any questions in chat go ahead i am managing the chat here so you can always go ahead and ask questions in chat uh, if you want to ask questions later on tonight on any flags out there, flag based patterns in general, hit me up in Discord. We love uh, communicating with our community over there in Discord as well. First and foremost, when it comes to the flag, and these are all step system mechanics in the step system. And it's uh, the step system is our swing trading system that we utilize to tackle trading. The concepts we're going to be covering here tonight are based on the step system, specifically session three. Uh, I believe it's uh, module three, session one for the trade identification. If you want to get into trade management, stop loss, targeting, and go through that pattern specifically within the step system, that's all session three. Specifically, we're just going through the pattern here tonight. So the first thing I want to talk about is those primary qualifications. What is a retracement? What are the primary qualifications that we have to go through? And then let's get into those secondary qualifications because what separates a good pattern in the market might be those secondary qualifications. What is the volume telling us on the pullback? What's the interday analysis telling us? What are secondary confirmation type indicators such as MACD? What are they telling us? Those are going into the secondary qualification type conversations. Then we're going to focus on prepping a trade when it comes to a pullback analysis. So let's first talk about 
the trade identification itself, how to score a pattern. Now, a tackle for any strategy that that we utilize at tackle trading, we have a guide for it. We have option. We have option trading playbooks. We have technical playbooks. We have step by step approaches as you can go through the process of ranking, you know, different strategies, different patterns. And when it comes to bullish retracements, when it comes to scoring the pattern, we have six different criteria we like to look at. First and for foremost, I'm going to go through this in a little bit of detail as we get through the session here tonight. But for but just right now, bullish uptrend, liquidity, corrective retracement, it's got to come into a technical catalyst. What is that signal candle and how do we identify it? Because the signal candle is kind of the get ready candle, right? And, and, and write that down. Get ready. Get ready. It's not the trade. That's the confirmation candle. The signal candle is the, ooh, I kind of like it. Now we just need to see some confirmation there. We're going to get into the, what that looks like here tonight as well. So let's go through primary qualification number one. You cannot have a bullish pullback, a bullish retracement, whether it's shallow in the flag or deeper in the retracement, you cannot have that unless you have a standard bullish uptrend first. And an uptrend is defined by a series of higher highs, higher lows, where price appreciates over time, demand constantly outweighs supply. And because the demand versus supply equation is predictable, it does equate to a series of higher highs and higher lows. And so when you're looking at a bullish uptrend, we look at a bullish uptrend as a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And as long as that continues, we're just going to be tracking what's called the one, two, three pattern. One is the breakout, two is when it gets overextended, and then three is during the corrective retracement. And so if you're looking at this from a one, two, three perspective, you would look at this right here on the breakout as pattern number one. Once it breaks out, we're looking at that as a bullish breakout. I see the breakout king himself there in chat. Hey, Frank, what's up, buddy? Uh, Frankie's never saw a breakout he didn't like because you break through a ceiling of resistance. Oftentimes, it leads to greater price appreciation. And it's one of the highest probability patterns in the entire marketplace from a technical perspective. And so pattern number one is a high probability pattern where it breaks the previously known area of resistance, which stopped price appreciation, the previous attempt to get above that certain number in this example would be 115. Once it clearly establishes a higher threshold of resistance, that's what we consider pattern number two. And pattern number two is up here at the overextended nature. As the market gets overextended, it gets a little bit exhausted in its current movement. And the analogy I often give in these examples is it's like running a race out there, not since the marathon. That's not what you know a higher high swing trade is. A marathon's an investment. This is this is a race. And so you you break out of resistance, you run a hundred yards as fast as you can. You're, you're probably going to get a little bit tired. You're probably going to get a little bit exhausted. You're probably going to want to put your hands on the knees and maybe even, you know, pass out in, 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 the, in the parking lot somewhere. But however you do it, you're most likely going to want to take a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a break, catch your breath, and then focus on that next movement. Same thing here happens technically. Once you break out, you oftentimes see a little bit of momentum transpire in the market where it breaks resistance. You see a little bit of momentum. That's like running that 100 yard, uh, 100 yard dash. You get a little bit of momentum early on. By the end of it, you get a little bit tired, a little bit exhausted, and then it's take a break. That's what happens here on the breakout right here. It runs fast, gets overextended technically, and then it starts to slow down forming pattern number two, and then it drives back down. And it's this pattern right here that traders, number one, love. They love pullback analysis. Even if the breakout is stronger, even if the breakout is cleaner, even if the breakout is a better technical pattern, the 
eyes do us a little bit of injustice here against breakouts because we saw it at the previous high. Oh, it's easily can get back up to that level. We can buy it on a dip, which makes everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. And so the bullish retracement is the pattern number three. Now, within the bullish retracement, I want to talk right now about the depth of the corrective retracement. Ex excuse me. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that for just a moment from now, because in the retracement, we also categorize three different levels of retracement analysis. You have shallow retracements, which are flag-based patterns. You have your standard retracements, and then what we consider technically the deeper retracement. All of these patterns within that third movement in a trend is some degree of pullback. It is some degree of retracement analysis. And we have to learn how to navigate the retracement. So I'm going to save the depth of the retracement very quickly for just a moment from now. But once again, in general, when we're talking about the uptrend, it is simply a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. And as long as that trend stays intact, we're going to simply rock with the trend. Simple. Easy peasy, yeah, easy peasy type conversation there. Now let's talk a little bit about that second qualification. The first qualification, you got to have an uptrend. You can't have a pullback unless you have a higher high. Really simple. Cannot, I know I had you at the breakout there, Frankie. You cannot have a retracement. You cannot have a bull flag. You cannot have a standard retracement. You can't have any pattern unless you hit that number two overextended, which means you got to have that bullish uptrend. Now, liquidity. Liquidity in general is an important conversation for traders. They want to get in, out of the market as fast as they can, and they need liquidity to be able to do that. Liquidity is basically the measure of how fast you can convert an asset into cash and vice versa. How fast can you get in? How fast can you get out? Really as simple as that. That's liquidity. Now, in the stock market, when you're measuring liquidity, you really are just looking at volume. You want to see a, a, a number of volume from a liquidity perspective. Now, in secondary qualification, we'll talk about exactly what you want to see in volume. But in liquidity in general, we're just talking about volume. How much volume is traded on a daily basis in the stock market? Typically speaking, you want to see a few hundred thousand shares being able to be traded on a daily basis. That's plenty of liquidity for, for you to get in and out of a stock trade. Now, if you're dealing with the options market, that might be a little bit different because we're measuring not just volume, but we're going to be measuring open interest as well. We want to make sure those contracts that we're trading are extremely liquid as well. But for right now, we just want to deal with liquid tradable assets. If it is not liquid, it is not for you. If you cannot get in and out of a stock trade in less than a fraction of a second, it's not for you. Now, further on, when you're looking at liquidity, you want to look at bid-ask spreads. And you want to, especially in the options market, you want to make sure those bid-ask spreads are pretty tight. But even in the stock market, if you're trading a few hundred thousand shares daily, meaning the stock, not you specifically, that's going to have a pretty tight bid-ask spread. And so if you have liquidity on the number of shares traded daily, typically you're not going to have any, uh, any issue on the bid-ask spread. Like I said, when it comes to the options market, and yes, we trade, we love trading options on bull flags, bull retracements. You want to make sure you have open interest there. You want to make sure that there's uh, both volume and open interest on the specific strike prices you are trading as well. So once again, from a liquidity perspective, in general, we want to make sure any asset that you're trading at any asset that you're investing in has plenty of volume in the stock market specifically. Now, specifically on options, you're looking at uh, both the bid-ask spread, you're looking at open interest, you're looking at volume on those specific strike prices. But once again, you just want to, in general, deal with liquid tradable assets so that you can get in and out in a fairly tight time frame. Now, the corrective retracement itself, what is it? It is a pullback. In, in general, that's what it is. Price was high, price is lower. But when you're looking at a pullback, 
not everything is a quality pullback. You want to see some degree of consistency, some degree, and, and you want to have rules that you uh, that you work off of in that consistency. And so when you're looking at a corrective retracement in general, it is the three pattern within the one, two, three. It's the pullback in the in the bullish uptrend. It's the higher low within the higher high, higher low pattern that we see dominate bullish uptrends. And so what it is, is a pullback of some variety. Now, minimum standards here, typically speaking, one day pullbacks, th that's not really a thing. One day pullback is, is really nothing. You can't have a pivot point with one candle. You need to see a little bit more consistency in the pullback because the pullback is telling us a story. And in that, and, and if you just have a snapback pullback of one day, for example, that's that's not a big story. That that that's a tweet. That's not a story. That's that that is something different. And so we want to see something a little bit more timely. You got to see a pullback, for example, has to have a minimum of three trading periods to technically be considered a pullback because you have to have three periods to create a pivot point uh, from a historical perspective. So if you simply look at that number three, it's going to manifest itself in technical analysis throughout throughout a lot of technical analysis. For example, for, for a pivot to actually form, you have to have a, a minimum number of candles between two different points of pivots. And so that number is three. When you're looking at the actual formation of a pivot, you have a signal can, uh, excuse me, you have a, you have a, a downward movement of price, a signal candle in a confirmation candle. That's three candles within the pivot formation as well. And so the number three kind of stands out to me from a technical perspective. Now, flag-based patterns, they typically are one to two days. They're just really tight pullbacks coming into a rising 90 MA. But in general, we want we definitely want to be tracking at least three in some degree of standard corrective retracement. Now, not all retracements are created equally. Not all retracements are good quality patterns, and not all retracements should we treat in the same degree of capacity. When we're looking at the depth of the retracement, remember, bullish retracement, bullish flags are the third pattern within a bullish uptrend. One is the breakout Two is when it gets overextended. Three is the retracement. So once again, if you're looking at this from a pure technical perspective, you get this type of number at the low price. It does that. It then breaks out. That breakout is pattern number one. You see a lot of momentum in breakout analysis because they're because they're momentum-based patterns. Now, the depth of the retracement, and I'm going to blow this up just a little bit here so we can kind of highlight that depth of the retracement. So let's say we have this type of number, just kind of over time, a little bit of W, a little bit of time consolidation, and we get this pop, this big old pop coming up and sets a higher level of resistance right there. Well, when we establish that higher level of resistance, first and foremost, you're going to see a cluster of small candles kind of forming up here. But once you start forming the retracement and it starts coming down, 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 down. As it comes down, you got to ask yourself a question. At what point is it no longer a retracement? At what point is it something completely different well, that's where the depth of the retracement conversation becomes important. The first thing we're going to track in a retracement, once we've established the overextended scenario, is we're going to track bull flag-based patterns. A bull flag-based pattern is a shallow retracement. Now, as it goes, oftentimes shallow retracements, we will utilize things like the 5 EMA, the 9 EMA, as catalyst to help us understand the flag. And so if you're looking for just a couple a couple parameters to help you understand a flag versus a standard retracement in the market, because we're going to be a little bit more aggressive on flags versus standard retracements. And as it works deeper, we're going to be a little bit more conservative with how we want to approach the market. And so the first uh, the first pattern that we typically see at the top end is what we consider the flag, excuse me, let me type that in, the bull flag. 
Now the bold flag will typically have two to three candles and it will typically work around the nine EMA. That's what we're looking at. Once again, the bull flag will typically have two to three candles. It's going to work against the nine EMA, which means the nine EMA is going to be our momentum check. We're going to look at that nine EMA as the market is coming down to test that key level of, of support. We're looking at the nine EMA. Now, the secondary technical catalyst we're looking at to help us understand if this truly is a flag is uh, is your Fibonacci retracement levels. Typically speaking, anything that traces between 20, about 21 and 38% on the Fibonacci, that's going to be some degree of flag. And so once again, if you're not really good at Fibonacci, don't worry about that. That's more of an advanced concept. Use that 9 EMA. That 9 EMA is going to be a really, really decent gauge. And we'll look at that in a little bit here to help you understand where the catalyst uh, of support can certainly form. Now, the second type of pattern we're going to be looking at here in a retracement, once again, the second type of pattern. And I'm not as good as Coach Tyler taking notes while I'm also drawing. So, uh, so uh, please be patient with me as I do this. Is your standard retracement. Now, your standard retracement typically will come three to five candles. And typically, we're working somewhere around the 20 SMA. So when you're dealing with standard retracements that are a little bit different than the flag, you certainly, let me get that uh, line a little bit better, excuse me. You certainly work to where it's coming down, 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 down. So you see it come a little bit deeper in the retracement. Oftentimes it will work more than three to five candles on the downside. And it's going to come into really kind of that momentum check against the 20 SMA. And that's a standard retracement. Now, as it works down deeper, 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 we get a little bit more concern technically in retracement analysis. When it works into a flag, mm, we're, we're giddy up and we're go. Front run that breakout all day long. So once again, when you're looking at that first flag here and you get that nice little pop up and it starts working down, you get into that 90 of May, you got that two, three days, boom, we're go time. It, it, ask Coach Frank, front run that breakout all day long. You got a momentum and trend. You got a momentum pattern. You kissed off the 90 of May. What else do we need besides go, 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 go? That's what we're going to be looking at in those flag-based patterns. Now, as it works a little bit deeper, though, into your standard retracements, and it works a little bit deeper here, and it starts working into the 20 SMA, you're going to be a little bit more cautious. You're going to be a little bit more, hey, let's see that. Uh, let's let's definitely see that confirmation here. Let's work out some demons technically. Let's make sure we get that upward movement in price. Let's clip the interday resistance level and let's go, 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 go. But you're going to be a little bit more cautious in a deeper retracement because it's given up the momentum. A lot of traders might not understand that. But as it works deeper, you're giving up momentum. And then as it works even deeper, 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 deeper in the retracement, you start asking your question, well, what's going on here? What's going on? Deeper retracements oftentimes come more than seven days down. You certainly give up all the momentum in the world, but it's still a bullish retracement because you're still technically above the previous pivot. Anything about the previous pivot is a bullish uptrend. It's just weaker. And so as it works its way down past a 50% Fibonacci retracement number, as it works down past the 20 SMA, now what are we looking at? More than seven days down, typically, not all the time. Obviously, volatility in the market can impact that. But you typically work about seven or, or more days down. You're typically clipping the 9 EMA. You're typically clipping the 20 SMA. You're more than oftentimes coming into a 50 period moving average, which means it's not going to be a clean journey back up. And for uh, for trading, which is so historically based, and we just had a momentum and trend, you cannot technically project a higher level of resistance, which means you're most likely going to see some degree of trend reversal, which means king's bad. We like to see that king's bad type trade in deeper retracements, where again, think about it like this, as we give up momentum, 
you need to see a little bit more constructive confirmation. As it works into a flag, man, you break up against the uh, signal candle, go, 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 go. When you work into a standard retracement, you got to see a little bit more dose of confirmation. You work into a deeper retracement, you got to see a little bit more of a short-term immediate reversal type formation called the king's bed. And so in general, once again, as you give up momentum, you're going to be a little bit more conservative on your concepts of confirmation and, and, and strategy selection, quite frankly. That's what changes when it comes to the depth of the retracement. You still like the trade. You, you like a higher high, a higher low in any trade, in any stock you track, you're going to like the setup, but you got to be a little bit more constructive, a little bit more patient to work out some of those technical demons on the depth of the retracement. Flag-based patterns, you got momentum and trend, you got momentum and pattern, you got momentum against the 90 MA, it's giddy up and go, go, go. A little bit more of a deeper retracement, you got to be waiting on that king's bed, which takes a little bit of time. So the depth of the retracement matters, the deeper the retracement, the more constructive confirmation that you're absolutely looking for. So I hope that conversation and the detail of that conversation helps you a little bit as we navigate those depths of the retracement. Now, when, as, we're, as we're working through the depth of the retracement, the shallow retracements, i.e. the flags, the standard retracement, 38 to 50% Fibonacci retracement coming into the 20 SMA or the deeper retracements of the 61% variety, 50 period moving average type test, those types of retracements, we want to make sure it comes into a technical catalyst. It, it, and it doesn't mean the market can't form support. The market form support is one of the things, it's one of the hallmarks that we believe in as technicians is support is defined by the marketplace, by an upward movement in price. But oftentimes support working works in conjunction with a catalyst. Like I said, flags, 9 EMA, standard 20 SMA, uh, deeper retracements, 50 SMA. Those are just moving averages you can look at. Certainly, we can look at other degrees of technical catalyst as well, such as significant price thresholds, significant whole numbers, 10, 20, 50, 100. We can certainly look at the previous areas of old resistance, old support. Pivot formations of the history have a tendency to manifest themselves in the future. We should know where the traders of the past decided to buy, decided to sell, because those behaviors manifest themselves in the future. There's nothing new in the world of investing and trading. It's just a repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And so we want to make sure that we go through a little bit of a spot check. Where's old, old resistance? Where's old support? Where did the traders make these decisions in the past? Because the past is the best barometer for the future. When you're looking at moving averages, in retracement analysis, moving averages are powerful. No doubt about that. There, and, and what Coach Mark says, who's the author of the Hard 14 at Tackle Trading, he says he loves them because they're moving support and resistance zones. Whereas trend lines are drawn, right? We draw those trend lines. We identify support and resistance from a previous pivot pr perspective. Where you draw your lines, where you draw your pivots on Fibonacci analysis will play a massive role in the accuracy or, or lack thereof when it comes to utilizing Fibonacci. And quite frankly, the, the, most, the majority of the time I see people using Fibonacci's um, the levels they get wrong are pretty substantially, pretty, pretty substantial and even minor mistakes in drawing pivot points. Elliott Wave, uh, Elliott Wave and Fibonacci can, can really change the projection quite a bit. But unlike those which do take into account human error to a certain extent, when it comes to moving averages, there's nothing you're personally calculating. They are used by algorithms and they are moving support and resistance zones. So very similar to how you would draw a Fibonacci horizontal level or very similar to how you personally would connect pivot points and draw trend lines, moving averages are quickly becoming some of the more popular ways of identifying potential buying zones in, in, in uh, retracement analysis because of, quite frankly, they, they were very popular for years and years and years and years. And they were discounted a little bit. 
But over the last seven, eight years, the, the popularity and specifically as they're tied to algorithms and how important algorithms are, it's just, I don't even think there's an argument any longer against uh, using moving averages. In fact, I feel if you don't use moving averages, you are putting yourself behind the eight ball to a certain extent. And what we love about them, they're not difficult. It, it, it's not its not complex math. Not No, we might say it's an algorithm, but it's a 20 SMA cross. That's it. These things go back to how every indicator was created uh, all over the course of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And so when it comes to primary uh, qualification number four, we're going to want to make sure that we come into a technical catalyst. And once again, if you're if you're if you want to be really good technically here, you want to match momentum with momentum, loss of momentum with loss of momentum. So when you're tracking shallow retracements, i.e. the flags, use momentum indicators, use momentum catalyst. That would be the 90 EMA standard. You want to switch it up just a little bit. Now, when it comes to that fifth qualification, that fifth qualification is what we talk about the signal candle. The signal candle is, that's a great question on moving averages. Um, very quickly, which moving average use exponential or simple? Um, hard 14 is a great way to explain this, but in general, let me just put it like this. 590 EMA, excuse me, the five and the nine EMAs, those are the really standard by traders, five, nine, 13. Those are kind of your standard EMA trades. It doesn't mean you can't use longer time frames. I just feel it's kind of worthless to use a 50 EMA, quite frankly. I could care less about a weighted moving average that uses a longer time frame. I think it's kind of silly, quite frankly, um, especially when you don't care about the momentum 50 days ago. You care about current momentum, not historical momentum. And so five, nine, 13 are standard EMA timeframes. On SMAs, you can be a little bit more traditional there, uh, 20, 50, 200. And then those standard timeframes we'll use on different timeframes of charts, but those would be the timeframes on the moving averages. Once again, 5, 9, 13 would be the uh, standard numbers on EMAs. Uh, 20, 50, 200 would be the uh, standard timeframes on SMAs. And that's a great question, by the way. Let's talk signal candles. The signal candle is the slowing momentum typically within a retracement analysis. It's the candle that you constantly hear us talk about at Tackle when we see a retracement and it's coming down, 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 down. And we say the phrase, and you guys know what it is, right? I know you know what it is. Needs a doji. Needs a doji. And then when you get that doji, right? You get that doji and you say, ooh, that looks good. Oh, wow. And we see it all the time, right? Chart pulls up and you have this innate response. You have this, in, just this immediate response. Ooh, I like that. Well, you like it because you're seeing the signal candle. The signal candle is not confirmation. The signal candle does not mean put a market order and just, you know, YOLO this. That's not tackle trading. That's not what we do. We don't YOLO. We're constructive. We like technical patterns. We like to see the signal candle and we like to get as excited to where we're going to put our entry order to get filled if we get confirmation. That's the signal candle. The signal candle is the slowing momentum candle at your technical catalyst, not necessarily random in space at your technical catalyst, at the 9 EMA, at the 20 SMA, at a 38% retracement, at the 50 SMA, whatever you're tracking from a catalyst perspective, and y'all know it, traders know it, right? You're tracking this catalyst. Hey, you, you come into here. You see that nine? You, co you come meet that nine. You see that 20 SMA? Mm-hmm. You come down a little bit. Come, come play with the twist, uh, 20 SMA a little bit. And then let's get that doji. Let's get that slowing momentum. And so when it comes to the signal candle, it's the candle that occurs that, that confirms slowing momentum in the pullback. And so as the market works down, 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 we get that doji at the nine. That's the signal candle. That's the candle where we're like, okay, prep, go. We get confirmation tomorrow. This is a trade. Put our entry, get our stop. 
Let's get our target orders. Let's prep the trade. That's the signal candle. It is not the signal to buy a stock at a market order on an overnight price action in any capacity. And I know I'm being a little bit hard on that disclaimer, but it's something I've seen a lot in my career. New traders see a signal candle and they're quite frankly, lazy traders. They don't do the prep work. They don't listen to the entire analysis. They just want to YOLO. And then when it doesn't work out, they just want to blame somebody else. And that's not tackle trading. That's not how we do business at tackle trading. We like to be constructive with the technical analysis. We like the technicals to tell stories and the story it's telling is the slowing momentum. But what it does not indicate is the opposite of slowing momentum, meaning bullish momentum. What the doji signal candle does is it simply tells us that the downward pressure in price during the retracement has slowed down. That's it. That's it. So if you want to YOLO in a slowing bearish environment, be my guest, but that's not a recipe for consistent success as a trader over time. Yes, YOLO one trade might work out. You YOLO a thousand examples like this, you, all you're going to do is get stopped out 90% of the time because you don't have confirmation yet. It is simply the candle that we prep. And so whenever you see a scanner report where it says needs a doji, or you're ever looking at a, one of the picks on the scanner report and it it's prepped, but you still see a downward pressure in price the following day. Again, that's prep based on current price action. You got to see that confirmation candle. Once again, the signal candle, a slowing momentum candle. So if it's a slowing momentum candle in the signal candle, what is the confirmation candle? The confirmation candle is when you break out of something where you haven't just slowed down, but you've exploded back up. Remember Marty, the beautiful elephant that jumps on trampolines that tackle trading. We love Marty. He's beautiful. The, the most beautiful elephant in the history of elephants. That's Marty. Marty, when he sits on the trampoline, is a signal candle. That's what Marty is. He represents the signal candle when he's on that trampoline. And whenever we use Marty as an example, we always put the order above Marty's head to only get filled in the trade if Marty jumps back up. That's the confirmation candle. It's the order above the signal candle that confirms if we get that upward movement in price. And so when you're looking for confirmation, once again, retracements are telling us a story. A candlestick is telling us a story. A big candle versus a narrow candle tells us a portion of that story. In a retracement, it works down, 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 down. We get this candle here, momentum down. We're just, look out below here, momentum down, look out below. We need to see a signal candle. We get the signal candle with the slowing momentum candle. And then confirmation is that next upward movement in price. And so when you see the story of a pivot, think about a dance. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One is the preceding candle. That is the candle that precedes the slowing momentum. We do not know that until we see history play out. If it's a big red candle, in this example, it's black. But if it's a big red candle, you are look out below. You're not saying, hey, let's prep that trade in face of the big red candle. Uh-uh. You're waiting. You're waiting. You don't know if it's going to standardize or, or a deeper retracement. We're not talking about breakout. A breakout, man, you break out of resistance, you're clean, go. No, that's not retracement analysis. You want to master by the dip. This is how you master by the dip. You be constructive against the candles, against the pattern. You match momentum with momentum. You match aggressive with aggressive and conservative with conservative. When it comes to the, the story of a pivot, it starts with downward movement in price that you do not know is a pivot yet. The only thing you know is you have a bullish retracement in the, in, in the greater conversation of a bullish uptrend. You're coming near a catalyst and you need to see slowing momentum before you get excited about it. In the preceding candle, however, 
once we do see that second candle, we get that pivot formation. That's candle number two. And that's where we get excited. We got our slowing momentum. It's at a technical catalyst. Let's giddy up and go. And then the third candle is that Jesse Livermore candle, one of the greatest traders of all time, lived over 100 years ago. And he said, do not move without confirmation. Confirmation is the insurance you're right. You've been looking at this stock for, for, I don't know, minutes to days to weeks to years you've been tracking this stock. I think you can be a little bit patient and wait for the confirmation that you are right on your projection. Again, you're not YOLOing, you're being constructive against the price action. You're being technically consistent. You're not trying to nail the low, you're trying to nail the probability here and you're waiting for that confirmation candle. That's the third candle in the pivot point. And so historically, when you look at a pivot, you have the preceding candle, which comes down. You have the pivot candle, which is the signal candle, which basically confirms slowing momentum. And then ultimately, historically, you look at that confirmation candle, which technically has to go above the previous day's high. So when you're looking at confirmation, technically, it's got to go above this level right here. And if it doesn't go above the high of the day on the pivot candle, you don't technically have confirmation. Now, a lot of traders, they might prefer to use more interday da data. You see me and Frank talk about this all the time in Frank's charts. When we talk about, hey, are you going to discount that wick? Well, th that's that's kind of the conversation we have sometimes because the way algorithms work, sometimes it can create a little bit of volatility and throw it off a little bit. And so technically speaking, we got to confirm above the previous, uh, above the pivot candles high. Oftentimes we like to look at that from an intraday perspective. When do we use weekly charts in the process? You know, honestly, in, in retracement analysis, I don't use as many weekly charts in retracement analysis. I think when it comes to the utilization of multiple time frame analysis, it's really at the breakout perspective. When you're breaking out of a multiple time frame resistance level, you have a daily resistance that tracks against a weekly resistance. For example, you're looking at two different time frames of moving averages on daily, weekly charts for a potential breakout. And so for me, multiple time frame analysis is really utilized within breakout analysis, whereas retracement analysis. It's hard to get that on a multiple time frame because typically you're already in some degree of trending environment and you're trying to track that buying opportunity coming off the dip. Whereas in multiple time frames, those are more utilized in, in weekly, daily, weekly scenarios to track breakout potential. We use it a lot in reversal analysis, for example. Again, I love this question. We use it a lot in reversal analysis to try to understand the multiple time frame of where we're looking at on a reversal confirmation type type conversation. We like to look at it at the top end of charts when you're looking at, you know, a a, a flag based pattern in a short term trend against the backdrop of a neutral intermediate trend. Again, that would be a proper utilization of weekly and daily charts to make sure multiple time frame is aligned. But specifically within retracement analysis, I actually, I actually think it doesn't do as much justice to go out in time. I think it actually does a lot more justice to go lower in time frames. And so if you're swing trading and you're tracking a daily chart, for example, very, very rarely am I going out to the weekly chart to kind of get the data points that I need to get this to really kind of identify, for example, a preceding a signal and a, and a confirmation candle within a pivot. I'm just going to track the daily chart and the, and the depths of the retracement on that time frame. If you're day trading, you're really focusing on just interday data. You're swing trading on retracements. You're really just focusing on the daily data. If you're looking at a position opportunity off a weekly retracement, what you're actually doing is you're looking for a reversal against a short-term trend. And in that capacity, in a, in, a, in a deeper retracement, and I know this is very detailed to a very simple question, but that's how, that's how I do it. You guys all know me. But in a, in a deeper retracement, yes, because we're going to wait on King's Bed, you might wait for multiple time frame alignment on that one. But in general, in retracement analysis, you're, you're sticking on that time frame. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But that was a great question. And I felt it deserved a little bit of a detailed answer there. Now, 
by the way, that's also how my 30 minute sessions easily go to 60 minutes because I like to get questions and I like to be detailed in my response to my questions. And if you like that, we also do that in Discord as well. So come join us. Now, when it comes to the confirmation candle, once again, technically speaking, conf confirmation is a close above the previous day's high. That's what it is. Now, secondary qualifications. These are things that you don't have to have, but you want, right? It's the wants, not the needs. Primary qualifications, you, know, you, you need to see those things. Those are things you have to see. You, you don't YOLO. Those are things you have to see. You got to see a bullish uptrend. You got to see a catalyst. You got to see confirmation. You got to see these things, right? You got to see these. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I, I do think there's a Brady for 80, so we might go 80. Now, in terms of secondary qualifications, these are things you want. You want to see these things, but you don't necessarily need to see these things to make a trade. Again, it's the things that separate, you know, a decent retracement from a good retracement, right? A good retracement from a great retracement, a great retracement from a retracement that you call textbook that you put into a book and then it obviously goes against you. That's how the textbook retracements work, by the way. All right, secondary qualifications. Let's go th through these fairly quickly. Number one, you want to see a low volume pull back. That's the one qualification I'm going to spend a little bit of time on. Number two, MACD. This is where we really kind of use indicators to lower our time frames down so that we can get secondary confirmation. Number three, if, if healthcare is breaking support, guys, and you've found the one stock that might be in a retracement in healthcare, I probably would go to a different sector, right? The top-down approach to the market is very strong at tackle trading. It's something we believe in. And so if, if we got a flag-based pattern within communications, don't go to utilities breaking support, right? If you got a flag-based pattern in discretionary right now, don't go to energy that's double top, double bottomed right? And so uh, market sector industry stock. And so you want to make sure you have correlation. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to match technical pattern with the market sector and the stock for you to make a trade. Just don't do something that the market, that, that that area of the market is not doing. And so again, if we're looking at a flag in the market like we are today, well, might want to stay away from healthcare, might want to stay away from staples, might want to stay away from utilities, might want to stay away from basic materials, might want to stay away from the areas in the market that are clipping a little bit of support when we're talking about support holding here. So match correlation, implied volatility. This is really more from an options perspective. You don't want to buy options with a massive volatility. That means you're paying a little bit of premium. Make sure volatility matches your option system. Uh, we are in earnings season. It's Coach Frank's favorite season. He talks about how much he loves this season all the time. And just make sure, <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. Make sure you know when your company's earnings are because we do not, again, think about this. We're all tracking probability analysis. We're all tracking momentum. We're trying to use history as our gauge for the future, earnings is a massive black hole in that analysis. There is not an edge on earnings. I could care less who says it. I don't care. I do not care. If Warren Buffett himself, which he would never do, but if he said, hey, listen, you should make this trade before earnings, I would say, no, that's ridiculous behavior. Come on. It, earnings is a massive, massive variable. Now, typically, you provide decent earnings, market's going to go up. And if you provide missed on earnings, markets are going to go down. But you don't know what that's going to do. And quite frankly, you don't know what the institutions are going to do. And how many times have you seen a great report go down in price? And how many times have we seen a piss poor report go up in price? There is some random elements to it. So just make sure that you're not holding short-term trades through earnings. There's just better environments to that. And, and, and for a lot of traders, they like to make sure that they're working off their watch list, make sure that stocks are not fundamentally just bleeding out there. But the one qualification in the secondary scenario that I do want to talk a little bit about is that low volume pullback, because that to me is it, it's debatable. And by the way, as an author of this system, I had this debate with myself internally a lot 
But there is a debate out there whether or not you need to see. Remember, wants versus needs here. Needs are primary qualifications. Wants are secondary qualifications. Do you need to see low volume in the pullback to make the trade? The answer that we ultimately ended up in is no. You do not need to see low volume in a pullback to justify the trade. You definitely want it though. Because what volume measures is the measurement of participation. In the upward movements in price in the market, you want to see big participation. You want to see momentum. You want to see retail. You want to see institutions. You want to see everybody get a piece of that pie. You want to see from the retail side to the institutional side, you want to see everybody being like, YOLO, let's go. That's what you want to see. And what you also want to see as people in institutions, the retail side or the institutional side, as it starts to come down in price after it gets overextended, you also would like to see lesser volume there because what that tells you is that traders, not the institution, retail, not the institution, because it's the institution that drives a lot of this. It's the institutions that provide a lot of the liquidity. It's the institutions that drive a lot of the uh, momentum and the volume. You don't want to see increasing volume in a pullback because that tells you there's a conversation to be had. That tells you there's a debate to be had. Is the market overpriced? Is it undervalued? Is it overextended? Is it underextended? You know how the debates happen. The debates we have in the market are very similar to the lively debates we have in the political in, uh, arenas out there. Everybody's got an opinion and everybody's going to share that. And if you see bigger increases in volume in the pullback, there's a lively debate. There is a lively debate and the institutions are participating in that debate. What eliminates that concern, I would say, is lower volume. As you work down in a retracement, you want to see lower volume because the lower volume signals to us traders that it's just traders. It's not the institutions. It's not a massive debate. There isn't a market conversation. It's just traders doing their job. And what is their job? Lock in profit. That's their job. And so you want to see that just come down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And you want to see that volume subside showing you it's just trader on trader crime here. It's the traders that punched it up and it's the traders that are locking in profit, rinse and repeat. Because if it's just traders locking in profit and it's nothing else out there, it's not another massive variable. It's not another conversation the market's having. But if it's just profit taking. What do you think those traders are going to do again? Traders are programmed. They're programmed. They're going to program to buy that breakout. They're going to sell it overextended. And as it retraces into support, they're programmed to buy that dip as well. And so as it comes down, 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 we want to see that lesser volume there. So even though volume is not a need. It is a want. It is not a primary qualification. It is technically a, a secondary confirmation tool. It is important. And I felt like we just wanted to have uh, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a conversation on volume. So once again, during the upward movements in price in general, you want to see an increase in volume circa what you're seeing in this example. You see that increasing volume here during this upward movement in price. During the corrective retracement, we want to see that volume contract as well. That would give you a secondary confirmation analysis when it comes to pullback analysis. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked a lot about the primary qualifications. We've talked a lot about the secondary qualifications. And I, I truly do hope for, for the pro members out there that you know, there's this was a little bit of review. I get it. These are tackle trading 101s. They're beginner level education. It's a little bit of review, but I know when I was a young trader, review certainly helped me and I hope it did help you guys as well. And for the newer traders out there that are just learning technical analysis or, or hearing this conversation we're having here today on bullish retracements, flag-based patterns, depth of the retracement, pivot candles, signals, confirmation, oh me, oh my, it's, it feels like it, it's a billion different data points out there. Number one, it's not. 
It's more complicated in your head than you're seeing it visually on a screen. And sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to indoctrinate yourself into the language, into the in, into the into the descriptions that traders have. It, that's what's happening here. It is not overtly complicated. You just might need to talk to uh, other traders, other coaches, get a different perspective, go through the step system. If you're a pro member, utilize Tackle 101 on technical analysis, a two-hour introductory co uh, course to tackle trading. There's a tremendous amount of things that can help you navigate the technical conversation. And if you do love the technical conversations we have at Tackle, I do it every day in the halftime reports. We break down all the technical conditions. But before I leave you here tonight, it would not be a Tackle Trading 101 if we didn't prep a trade. Now, I always think that that's kind of a hallmark we believe in a tackle trading. Education before application, but if you're going to get education, make sure to do the application. Now, we spent 45 minutes talking about the educational aspect, the the step-by-step -step approach to bull flags, bull retracements in general, pullback analysis. I want to look at a couple stocks out there that are Kind of in that pullback analysis. First of all, OLN. OLN is a uh, is a pick on the scan report. I believe it's on the uh, stock report, but I'd have to check. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Now, first and foremost, let's let's identify the story technically here. Number one, you have a breakout. I agree, Dennis. With that application, is so crucial, so crucial. Number one, you have a breakout right there. It's not the cleanest breakout, but it was a front-running earnings breakout, which oftentimes isn't the cleanest breakout. But you got a breakout. We can all see it. You got a little bit of consolidation here. It breaks out of the previous area of resistance. And then we firmly establish a higher level of resistance. And so we do have the pattern. Once again, pattern number one, pattern number two, and now we're going through pattern number three. Now, when you're looking at OLN here, it's it's technically considered a bull flag. Now, again, break in a, breakout analysis, and I think Frank would attest to this, it, it, it's cleaner. Breakout analysis is always going to be cleaner than retracement analysis because we're trying to nail the pivot. Whereas on, on resistance, we're just waiting for the ceiling to get broke, and then it's go, go, go. When it comes to retracement, it's a little bit more art here. There's a little bit more technique here. There's a little bit more difficulty when it comes to the retracements and really kind of, you know, uh, making sure that we're getting the uh, the analysis that we want. And so as you're first tracking, once again, think about what we talked about tonight. The first thing we're going to track after we get over extended is we're going to track the momentum-based patterns of the flag. Typically speaking, when you do establish number two, as you're seeing over here, you typically want to first look for either a high base, which is literally just simple consolidation. There's no true direction. It just does this type of number, just consolidates for a little bit, and then it firms up that resistance handle. We're looking at a breakout there. And so the first pattern you look as it gets a little bit overextended is that high base. That is the number one momentum-based pattern in the marketplace. You got momentum and trend, match it with a high base breakout. You're good to go all the time. But oftentimes, the flag and the high base, are, are they're, they're very close to one another. The difference is the flag will come down a little bit more and catch up and, and kind of match the 9 EMA Whereas when you're looking at high bases, it just really structures at the top, really fights against resistance and the nine EMA catches up to it. And so in this example here, the nine EMA is catching up to the flag, but the price action is meeting it in the middle to a certain extent. And so when you're looking at that flag, you would categorize this a flag right now because it met the nine. And the second reason, remember the second reason you want to, you know, if you want to learn a little bit about Fibonacci retracement analysis, I'm just going to draw my pivot to pivot here. You can see that pivot to pivot coming up all the way into resistance there. Once again, that didn't do the trick here. Let's do that again. Let's get that percentage there. So we're going to draw the percentage here. I just misclicked there. So you draw the percentage and what, lo and behold, did we come into? 21 to 23%. 
oftentimes that 21 to 23 percent is the 9 EMA on a flag based test with momentum. And so you have momentum in OLN, you have a bullish flag, it's coming into 23 percent. You found the 9 EMA. This is a hallmark example of a bullish flag based pattern. Now, do we have confirmation yet? This is the thing that is a little bit more of the art when it comes to retracement analysis. As the market is moving down, here's day one, here's day two, here's day three, now it's day four. We have four days in the retracement. At no point has this confirmed yet. At no point has this confirmed. Even the red, even the green upward moving in price here, that's not confirmation. Confirmation is not above the previous candle's body. Confirmation, and that's why it's a green candle, is because it's just above the candle's body, which means it technically made a couple of pennies on the day from yesterday's close. That's it. It gapped down. It closed higher than the gap down. It's not confirmation. Confirmation is not an upward movement in price. Yeah, we went up by a, by a couple of cents. So what? That's that's two seconds into a close that was positive. That's nothing. You want to see it above the previous day's high. That's confirmation. And so when you look at the candle here, we want to look at the high for the day, which is 6302. And so we definitely want to see this above 6302, which once again, when you come into the 30 minute chart here, that's the high of today. That coincides with that opening candle. And so when you're looking at flag-based patterns from a confirmation perspective, by the way, when you're, when you're looking at drawing your resistance levels on a flag, just connect your resistance, nice little pivot point down, look for confirmation above that point there, above 63, that's kind of the high of the day. Well, what does that mean, guys? And I want you to think about this. What does that mean? That means we're breaking through the trend line that was pressing the price action down. It also means we're confirming above the previous day's high, which is textbook confirmation as well. And so because we're waiting to go above the previous day's high, it gets us to break out of this trend line, which is again, kind of textbook confirmation out there when it comes to bullish retracement analysis. And so coming back out to the daily chart here, we're tracking this flag-based pattern off that 9 EMA. We're looking for confirmation here. Now, Google, let's talk about Google here. Same type of conversation, a little bit of a different momentum. Momentum was provided by earnings. Little bit of that gap down analysis getting filled here. And as Google gaps, as Google gapped up and fills down, what do we see happening here? Two-day pullback, 90 EMA is catching up to it. What do we know that as? We know that as the flag. And so what do we need to see here on Google to get confirmation? Shockingly, really kind of simple here. It needs to probably another day of consolidation. If it doesn't do that, anything above the candle's high, which would also coincide with getting back up above the 200 SMA, that would be confirmation on Google. Home Depot, good little flag. Got an earnings coming up here in a couple of weeks from now. Good little flag coming back down to test the previous breakout channel. Two-day pullback. What's catching up? That 9 EMA. Why are we seeing these in flags? Great question on Tesla. I looked at it earlier today. The problem with Tesla is it's not retracing. I'm talking retracement analysis today. Tesla doesn't want to retrace. Tesla's a breakout potential. We talked about this in, for the scanner reports quite a bit. And basically what we said for the scanner reports is, yeah, let's see a couple more days of consolidation here. A little bit overextended on Tesla. If I was doing a webinar on high basis, I would pick Tesla as an example. It's It's got a really good recovery going on and it's got a really good price point at 200, which is a known resistance area. And a couple more days of consolidation here, firming up that 200 day while the 90 EMA catches up to it, makes a whole heck of a lot of sense to me. And so it's more of an overextended situation on Tesla right now, needs a little bit of consolidation. That would meet high basis, not necessarily retracements. Now, if Tesla starts to retrace back down, that's a different conversation. But as of right now, what the last three days is telling me is we're talking more about a breakout 
one to two days from now, three days, maybe going into the weekend, maybe you never really can pick the breakout channel or the breakout time frame, but you got a pretty clean breakout here and just got to wait till for the 90 and maybe catch up. Good call out on Tesla. Tesla's forming up, no doubt about that, but more of a a uh, high base type situation than one of those standard flags. And then Costco here, once again, more of a standard flag based pattern, waiting for that nine EMA to catch up. You see the story being told, a lot of good momentum here on Costco. Inside analysis, it's kind of like an inside straight. Like it, like the inside candle here, upward moving in price would technically confirm that as a potential trade. And with that said, I just want to say to the tackle trading team, you guys are amazing. I love you. And I know our community really, really appreciates each and every one of you. Coaches talk about you guys all the time. I talk about you all the time. I love the tackle trading community. And I truly do hope for those of you who are not part of our pro member community, that you'll give tackle trading an opportunity to, to, to be a part of this great community. We love trading. We love educating. We love talking and, and hanging out with the tackle trading community. So if you are looking for a great community of like-minded investors, like-minded traders who share information, share trading ideas, and always put education at the heart of everything we do, Tackle trading is absolutely the community for you. There's not a community out there that will provide the amount of information that Tackle provides that will provide it in the way we provide it and will give you the things that we give you from a community perspective, weekly reports, mastermind groups, exclusive Discord access, daily, weekly, monthly webinars, amazing educational courses, you name it. And you could all just test it out, try it out. 15 day free trial, bit.ly slash join tackle pro. And if you need to sit down and talk to somebody about if tackle trading is for you, if you want to work with the tackle coach, if you need more structured, amazing education, whatever it is, set up an appointment with the amazing, awesome coach Sylvia, one of the best traders at tackle trading, also can help you paint the educational path for you as well. If you need help in any accord, tackletrain.com uh, slash schedule confirmation. That'll bring you up to this website, which is showing me live on YouTube as well. But you can also book a 30 minute consultation here. Just pick the time for you that works for you. And you can sit down with my amazing uh, uh, trading friend, Sylvia Cook. She'll take care of each and every one of you. And if you need some social proof, we provide that as well. These guys are the best. Thank you very much. They really care about their students. That goes without saying. And are dedicated to promoting financial education and economic freedom to people everywhere. That, that kind of nails it. That kind of nails it, Angelo, at Tackle Trading. That truly is our belief system. Rate of the resources, coaches are excellent and help traders of all levels of experience to succeed. Whether you are fresh off the boat or the veteran trader, we're there for you, no doubt about that. Tackle Trading is a great community. Lots of information to help on the path of active trading. Passively investing, go ask Coach Mark. He loves bleeding that, ca that cash flow. Styles of trading, we got them all at Tackle Trading. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an awesome, awesome class. Thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to teach you guys here tonight. Hopefully this helped you understand retracements, the philosophy around retracements, what it looks like, the primary qualifications, the secondary conversation. This is Coach Matt. If you have any questions for me on anything we discussed here tonight, hit me up over there in our Tackle Trading Discord channel. Once again, for us at Tackle Trading, you guys have an absolutely amazing night. Appreciate everything about all of you.